What is good, Regis recipients? How are y'all doing today? Let me know in the comment section. Y'all already know each and every episode, we have a different guest. And this week, we got my girl, Miss Charity McDowell. Say what's up to the people, Charity. What's up, y'all? Happy to be here. Yes, yes. Thank you for tuning in. And thank you, Charity, for joining me on this episode of Regis Reflections. People, 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 listen. Charity, tell the people what sport do you play? play volleyball. Best sport there is. Best sport. Mmm. Mmm. Controversial. What about what about hooping? What about basketball? Hey, I wasn't good with basketball, so that's none of my business. Okay. What, what position are you playing volleyball? Um, I'm a middle blocker. Middle blocker. What is can you explain what is that? And yeah. how did okay, yeah. So you got six people on the court. Mm -hmm. I'm at the net in the middle. So you got three middle. people front row, three people back row. I'm in the front, middle, and I'm middle blocker because I block both pens. Okay. So I block everything and I also attack. So that's a that's a lot of jumping, isn't it? It's a Bunch of jumping for sure. So there's like, do your knees hurt and everything like that? Your leg like doing all that jumping after games? Actually, okay, yeah. Like this year, I was like, people start calling me like the grandma on the team because I'm a senior, <laughs> and my knees are starting to hurt. And I was like, guys, my knees, my knees. I mean, that's what happens after like 12 years of volleyball. But wow. yeah, well, I'm. I mean, I really have not counted how many years I've been <laughs> with you, but it has been a long time. Um, yeah. Wow, wow, wow. So okay, so I have a question. So in volleyball. We saw, I see at the games, like the per there's a person in the front and they jump up really high and like they smack. So what is, and they smack the ball. What is that called? An attacker. An attacker. You got your outside is mm. the one on the left. This mm. is all front row stuff. Okay. I'm the middle and then the right side is on the right. Okay. Okay. So, okay. That's interesting. Interesting. So where are you, where are you from, Charity? I'm from Indianapolis, Indiana. Indianapolis. That What's town. that town? No, it's fair. How far is that from here? Two and a half hours. So it's not that long. Is it lit down there or is it rather calm or? Come. I also don't live in the city, but mm. it's not LA or anything, you know. <laughs> but it's still city life, I guess. That's true. Sure. If you could describe Indy in three words, how would you describe? It? Oh, in three words, mm -hmm. um, I would say, I mean, chill. Like that's one word, but like, and it really is like chill. I don't it's know. Chill. I'm like it's low key. The only thing we really got is the Indy 500, and I yeah. never go to that. And we got cornfield. So it's the Indy 500 is that the racing thing? That's the racing thing. That's you haven't like, gone once. I've never gone. Come on. I've never gone. It's yeah, mandatory. I know. I'll go at some point. I'll go at some point. I just don't really <laughs> care to be honest. Okay. <laughs> and okay. At least you being honest. Stand on business. You at least you being honest. I've let Indy those. It's very quiet. It's low key. You know. It is low key. Like I've never. I don't really go downtown like that either. So. Mm -hmm. I really don't have that much experience. Like, I live, like, 30, 45 minutes outside of the city. Is downtown pretty and everything like that? It's pretty. Yeah, yeah. I'd say it's, like, any other downtown, you know? It's not Chicago. Like, it's not that big. But, like, you still got traffic and stuff. Okay, it's not, yeah. like, crazy. Not a big call. So I'm call. All right, Indy. Miss Indy. Miss Indy. So, for volleyball, what got you? Who or what got you into volleyball? Yeah, so I remember a friend came over when I was in middle uh, elementary school. Like, this is like, fifth grade. Mm -hmm. um, and she came over and brought a volleyball with her, and she played volleyball. And so oh. we started playing around in the backyard, and I was like, oh, wait, I kind of actually, like, like this. This is kind of fun. And so my parents were like, okay, let's 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 explore this a little bit. And <laughs> they took me to the YMCA, and YMCA. like, go see if you like it. And so that way, so I played at the Y um, in, like, their little camp or whatever for kids, and I really, really liked it. I loved it. And so... From then, I just went and tried on tried out for my middle school team. Played um, volleyball through middle school. Did the feeder team for high school, like that team where like the eighth graders are basically like, there's a it's like a club team kind of, but like not really for transitioning to high school. Oh, so like it prepares you for that high school experience? Yeah, 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 yeah. So you're mm. kind of like on a, you're like a, you're on the team, like you're playing for the for the high school, but you're not actually in the high school yet. Mm, um, okay, okay, okay. And then I played all through high school. Um, How was that? It was cool. Like, I mean, my first year, my freshman year, I played JV at um, one school in my district, Lawrence Central. Mm -hmm. And then I transferred. <laughs> ah, transfer portal. Um, and yeah, I played up from there. Um, but yeah, it was funny. Like, I literally, I transferred my freshman year. Main major reason was volleyball because we were not good. Like, it was not a good volleyball program. Um, and Lawrence North was way better. So, and it was a better fit for me. Wow, wow, that's good. So, how would what year would you say? Did you have any tough years of volleyball throughout high school at all? Um, throughout high school, I wouldn't. Not really. I would say like I really just kind of grew like really, really fast. Mm -hmm. Like I got better really, really fast. Like right. I went from 
I didn't play travel club until my sophomore year of high school, like national level, which is Whoa. weird because that's early. That's no, that's like late. Like that's really? so late. Yeah, that's late okay. for in the volleyball world. Like <laughs> people play club and like national level. Some people play it like start when they're 10. So I started in like sophomore year of high school. Um, so I was kind of late. But what happened was my freshman year, I started training with my trainer now, who I've known since I was a kid. I literally call him my uncle. Mm -hmm. And he trained my other, my actual uncle who played in the, <laughs> in the NBA. And so he trained me with my jump and like just all of that stuff. And like my vertical like skyrocketed in like two weeks. Like it was literally insane. Like I think I got like four inches in two weeks. No way. Dude, Boy. I, like bro. And part of it was like learning how to jump. <laughs> <laughs> and just like doing like different training stuff like vertimax and stuff and like activating those muscles mm -hmm. yeah and so um it really just ended up like after my freshman season i started training with him and i was starting out for trying out for the non-travel team at my volleyball club and over those two weeks like try like tryouts for like two weeks but over those two weeks i just got kept getting better and better and better to the point where the club like literally came over and told my dad she needs to move up and they moved me up to like the other court of like regional. So mm -hmm. basically it's non-travelers, regional, regionals, nationals. Okay. They almost put me on the national team, but my dad was like, no. <laughs> he, like, he shut it down? Not? Yeah, because my dad was like, we're not about to pay all that money right now. Like that's not what we're doing. Cause it's really expensive. Like by the time I reached senior year and I was playing nationals, it was 10,000 easy. Yeah, yeah, Mom, easy. Cause I mean, you gotta pay for travel. You gotta pay for coaches fees. You gotta pay for like playing jersey. It's the hotels, food, like all of it. Um, but I ended up playing regionals my freshman club season, and then I ended up going to another club and I ended up playing up. Um, mm -hmm. so I played seven teams a year twice, and then I played eight teams, but I played nationals, um, ever since then. So my sophomore year. Wow. So how, how was nationals for you? It was fun. Like, I mean, the way that it works is like you basically that's how college coaches recruit you. Like mm. you go to these tournaments and it's basically at convention center. So you got like you go to Louisville, you go to Florida, you go to all these places, Indy mm. um, and you go to the convention center a lot of times. And so you just got courts everywhere. Like, I mean, like courts, ev hundreds of teams <laughs> playing at once and like I you're just walking it. around. Yeah. And the coaches like there's hundreds of college coaches walking around with like their gear on and stuff and just like going and scouting teams and scouting people. Um, and so club tournaments was really where you got recruited. It wasn't really high school. Like I think with basketball and stuff, like, yeah. high school is like big, but for us, it really wasn't like high school was just like, I mean, you play for your team, but club is where you really like you can go sweat, try hard. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I would say, I mean, club was amazing. Um, mm -hmm. it was a really fun experience. Just, I mean, even traveling with my dad, that's like the biggest thing that I remember for me, like traveling with my dad and us driving on road trips and stuff, um, <laughs> listening to music, him hyping me up, and just, like, the little stuff, you know, of um, doing that with my dad was really special. That is lit. That is lit, man. Pop, Pops, we having a special place in our hearts. For sure, for sure. So talk me through that recruiting process with Notre Dame and we truly got you to come here and play volleyball here at the University of Notre Dame. Yeah, uh, this is a story. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's a testimony. Uh, so it was my, I started getting recruited heavy my junior year, the end of my junior season for club. Mm -hmm. And so my parents always told me, you're going to know when you find that right school, like the school that's for you, you're going to know that's it. It's a feeling. It's a feeling. And so I was like, okay, like, I was like, all right. So I trusted them. And so I, every school I went to, like mm -hmm. I was getting reached out, I was getting offers and like doing official visits and stuff. None of them felt right. I was like, this just isn't right. And it got to the point where it was my senior year and I'm like, what have I done? Like, what have I, done? <laughs> I remember going through my contacts on my phone and like looking at the past, like the college coaches I had turned down. And I was like, do I reach back out? Like, I'm still not committed. I still haven't found, found a place. And I'm like, God, this is where you're leading me. Mm -hmm. um, and I also had really, really high expectations for myself as well. Like I was like, I yeah. know I want somewhere where is high academics because I am very, very like education is very important to me. Um, I want somewhere where it's really, really high athletics and where faith is a factor. Mm -hmm. Um, and so those two things, I really wasn't settling. And I was like, God, you know what I want? I'm waiting for it. You know, like I'm waiting, I'm not going to settle for less because I know what I got and know what I can do. I believe in myself. And so, um, it got my senior year and my mom's like, let's just check out Notre Dame. Like literally just on the academic side of things. Let's just yeah. go visit the campus and like, just go check it out. You might really like it. I was like, okay. Now, granted, I'm from Indy. I had never even looked at like the campus of Notre Dame. I Are you serious? Up, I'm so serious. Um, but you live you lived in the state though. I know, but I, I was looking at like everywhere else. I was the plan yeah, was not to I was looking true. at Texas. I was looking at New York. I was looking at like, all these other places. Like 
staying home was not the idea, but That's it true. turned out being perfect. Like I now I'm like, I want to be close to family yeah. like forever. I love it. Um, but she was like, let's go visit. So mm-hmm. I looked up the campus and I was like, this is gorgeous. Like, what? Let's go. And so the morning we were about to go, like 6 a.m., mm-hmm. um, I get this feeling like just email the coaches. And my mom was telling me too, like, email the coaches, just email them. I was like, okay, like I'm sure like places like Notre Dame, people already committed like freshman, sophomore year. Like, yeah. but I, I sent the email saying, like, hey, my name's Charity, coming to campus today, blah, blah, blah. Like introduce myself. Yeah. So we get to campus, we do like the whole like tour of campus and everything, and I'm loving it. Like I literally love it. But I'm like, okay, I'm still not thinking that much of it because I'm like, okay, I haven't heard anything from volleyball. And for me, I really wanted to play volleyball in college. Mm -hmm. And so my phone all of a sudden starts blowing up towards the end of the tour. Oh. My director calls me and he's like, Notre Dame's on the phone, like, do you want to talk to him? I was like, duh, like get off the phone, me, don't give him the number. What are you doing? (laughs) And so they gave him the number and they the coaches ended up calling me and they're like, hey, like we'd love to talk to you. Like, come by the gym later on. We got a game. Um, you can stay for the game, but also like we want to talk to you. Mm -hmm. Like, okay. And so, granted, I literally emailed at 6 a.m. This is now probably like around noon. Okay. So my mom and I are like, okay, we have like five hours. They wanted us to meet around five or whatever. We have like five hours to spend. We go around South Bend go to Olive Garden, we go to Kohl's, we're just chilling, <laughs> waste of time. Um, and at this point, I'm like, I have this feeling like I'm going to be back here. Like, I don't know how, but mm-hmm. like, this is it. Like, that was like on college, like on the campus, I was like, this is literally the place. Like, I feel it. I know it in my bones. Like, this is it. I don't know how it's going to happen, but I feel mm-hmm. like I'm going to be back here and this is where I'm supposed to be. Yeah. Um, And so while we're in Kohl's, actually, mm-hmm. I get an email from QuestBridge. <laughs> and you know what QuestBridge is? Yeah. Um, so for those of y'all who don't know, QuestBridge is basically like a program where students from around the country can get full rides to like academic full rides to top institutions in the country. A lot of QuestBridge. Yeah. And so, um, it's a scholars program. And so I found out while I was in Coles, I was a finalist for QuestBridge. And I was like, my mom and I went crazy. Like we were like, <laughs> like scared an old lady behind us. Like <laughs> it was great. It was great. Um, and so find out that while I'm waiting in South Bend at Coles. Mm-hmm. And then we go to meet with the coaches and they're like, they're like, wow, this is crazy. Like, I don't check my emails. This is what the head coach tells me. He's like, I don't check my emails. I got 9,000 unread emails in my inbox right now. He was like, something this morning told me to check my phone. So I checked my phone. Your name stuck out to me. So I clicked your email and you were like, good. And I was like, God, what? Did. God did. God did. <laughs> so and the assistant coaches are like, yeah, like they don't check their emails either, but it was raining. So they were in their office mm-hmm. and they checked their email. And I was like, what is going on? But at this point, they're also like, we don't have money. And I was like, oh, well, the conversation's over because I don't know. What to <laughs> um, and I was just like, dang, kind of bummed. I was like, man, like, I really want to be here. And so we stayed for the game. Um, and I just like, I don't I really don't know how to explain it to you other than that was God. But like, I knew I was going to be there. I just literally saw myself play on the court. I was like, yeah, this you just get it. that kind of feeling. It's something yeah. like you just I was know. Like, this is it. This is it. So we leave. Um, and the way that QuestBridge works, by the way, Notre Dame is an option on QuestBridge, but you have to fill out like what schools you want to be considered for the scholarship for before you find out you're a finalist. Mm. I didn't add Notre Dame to that list. So at this point, my mom, we're like, dang, like, I wish I could have added Notre Dame. If I would have known, I would have added them. Yeah. Um, and so we go to the counselors. My guidance counselor is like, yeah, it's too late. You can't add Notre Dame. My mom, <laughs> she's uh... like, call so my mom calls Notre Dame explains the situation and they're like check with Questbridge and see if they let you add him um I she called Questbridge they were like check with Notre Dame and see if they'll let you end of the day like they let me <laughs> add back- Notre Dame late. yeah they let me add Notre Dame late to my list mm-hmm. um and then I got the scholarship so I'm on an academic full ride here um but also playing volleyball and so that day the coaches called me and were like you want to do this, McDowell? I was like, uh, yeah, I do. Yes, let's, let's do it. Um, and so it's just, it really just blew my mind that it, like God came through like that, you know? And I even went back and I looked at some paper I had um, written before where I was riding home from training one day, talking to Laura, stressed. I was like, God, I don't know what, like where I'm going. I don't know what to, what to do, you know, with my future and just like college. And I told him everything I wanted in a school. I was like, if I could give you the perfect school, this is what it is. And I told him it all. And then I went down and I wrote it down. Mm-hmm. I look back at that list, like everything was checked off for Notre Dame. Like it described Notre Dame to a T other than community bathrooms. There are community <laughs> bathrooms on campus, which is fine. It's fine. But like, I kid you not, like every other thing on there was crossed off and it just blew me away. I was like, God, you're really that good. Like you say that when I trust you, mm-hmm. like you are trustworthy. And I was like, that, that's enough for me. You know, like you gave me the desires yeah. of my heart and it's crazy. I know it doesn't always work like that. But for me, it was the fact that I was just like, hey, 
if this doesn't work out, I'm going to go to the, I had another option lined up. I was like, that's where you have me to be, but we're going to do that. And I'm going to glorify your name there. But the fact that he opened the door for this is just so special to me yeah. and showed me like, God, you're real and you're there. Yeah, it's good. I feel like, cause I was, I was reading an article today and it was talking about how Jesus said, you know, leave all your worries with me, leave them at the foot of me and don't stretch yourself. And basically it just kind of shows that, you know, God has prepared you for each and every single battle and he knows where you're going to go and he's going to put you in the right place at the right time so don't worry and stress yeah and at the end of the day like god knows god knows how to give good gifts if That's our true. earthly fathers and people in our lives know how to give good gifts how much more does our heavenly father who has all resources all the love in the world is love how much better can he give us gifts you know and it's it's not necessarily that we always get what we want That's but true. it's the fact that you always get what's best you know he's working everything us. out for your good and our definition of good and his definition of good maybe two very different things but his is always better and his is like the true one so for me i'm like okay like if notre dame didn't work out wherever that next place was that would have been also a gift because yeah. god's a good father you know what exactly. i mean so it's not really looking at our looking at us and saying what is good in my eyes, but what's good in God's eyes and trusting him with that. Exactly. Big trust. You have to lead him. You know, he's going to lead you in the right way. So God led you here to Notre Dame, University of Notre Dame. What is your major here? I am science pre-professional, which is basically pre-med. Oh, um, oh before you continue, oh, pre-med. Yeah. That sounds like you're trying to become a doctor. That's the thing. I actually recently decided not to go to med school, um, which I... is surprising a lot of people because mm -hmm. I can certainly do it, um, but I don't want to be a doctor. That's what it came down to. Like that, my whole ever since high school, I've always debated. Like, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna go this medicine track, but uh, either I'll find something else that I really really love, or I'll fall in love with medicine and fall in love with the, the idea of being a doctor. And for me, that didn't happen. Like, I was always battling. Like, do I want to be a doctor? Why do I want to be a doctor? And what really brought it down for me was the fact that I couldn't answer why I wanted to be a doctor. Because I really didn't want to be one. Um, and for me, I live on mission. Like, it's impact. Who can I impact? How can I impact them? Yeah. And, I mean, medicine wasn't the way that I want to impact people's lives. And it wasn't really in that setting. So, honestly, I'm in this same opportunity and same, the same situation now that I was in four years ago of deciding college of telling God, like, where do I go next? Like, what's yeah, I next? Next? what do I do? Um, do you know Do you know yet what you want to do with this pre-med or? No, I actually am like looking at other fields like completely. Um, oh, wow. Yeah. So I'm really doing like a whole, you know, 180, but trying to, trying to figure it out, trying to see where the Lord's leading me next. Hey, man, so you're pre-med, are you anything else? Yeah. My supplemental major is Spanish and my minor is Africana Ooh. studies. Okay. So what are you trying to do with those two? Okay, so Spanish, I'm big on, you know, learning other languages. It's always just been really interesting to me, the fact that mm -hmm. we can communicate with people. But I'm also big on, big on knowledge. Like, the fact that we can know something and it changes everything is, like, crazy to me. Like, if I can know Spanish and I'm in the room with someone who needs help and they speak Spanish, I can help them just with my pure knowledge and mm -hmm. being in the room with them, you know? Yeah. And so for me, it's um, it's being able to relate with people in a different way and also communicate in another way that's like really, really fascinating to me ever since a young age. I've been taking it since I was in eighth grade. Oh. Um, but I want to be completely, completely fluent so that I can connect with people and be that like resource. So whatever field the Lord leads me to and that I go into, like I'm able to help people. And also just have that asset for myself. Like, that's a big, like, that's a good skill to have. It's a great yeah. skill. Africana studies, I've always been passionate about learning about Black history. I think it's huge. I think everyone needs to learn it. Mm -hmm. um, but we don't really get taught it in high school, um, which is a, a huge failure on the educational system, in my in my opinion. Um, but it was my opportunity to learn what I've always wanted to learn. So I was like, absolutely have to do something with Africana studies, take my education in my own hands and take the resources that are being extended to me. Mm, Africana studies, I was reading about that. And it's like, I, it's very interesting to learn about like all the history and uh, we're just within our culture, which is not in America, but just Africa and all over the world. It's very just enriching and you just learn a lot, which is really interesting. I'm thinking about actually adding that minor too. You definitely should. I would highly, highly recommend because it changes the way that you that you see your people. It changes the way that you see yourself because mm. you don't know where you're coming from and the and That's the true. struggle and the fight that and the strength that your people fought with in order to, to get for you, you to yeah. live the life that you're living now. It causes you to appreciate it on a whole nother level and also realize the power that's within you as well. Like, you know, and it like, I mean, there's so many lies that society tells you as an African-American person and you realize how stupid they are. Um, so that you actually <laughs> educate and become knowledgeable of like what your people have done and just the truth about issues. Wow. wow that's actually interesting. Africana studies. It's interesting. So with Notre Dame being such an academic rigorous school and you being a D1 athlete, how do you have time to balance 
the academics as well as volleyball? I would say time management for sure. Like, I have to know when I can do certain things and when I can't. And also sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Like, if I want to go hang out with a friend, like, no, I can't. Like, I got to do my work, you know? (laughs) And I think part of it was, like, education is huge to me. Like, I know education can open doors. And I love to learn. And so, for me, education was always at the top of my priority list. And so... It, it wasn't really that difficult to sacrifice all the time because I was like, first off, like, I like to learn. But then second off, my scholarship is tied to academics. Like, uh, my <laughs> academics slack, like, volleyball's out the floor. It's gone, yeah. Um, and so it was, I mean, time management, that's my biggest thing. Like, just knowing and using your time wisely. Like, yes. not just wasting time, but, like, using your time wisely and, like, getting things done and being productive. I feel like, I don't know, is it me? Like, when you're in college and, like, say you're just, like, relaxing in your room or something like that, and you just wondering, like, I'm relaxed right now. I shouldn't be relaxing. Like, I should be doing some work right now. Like, all this time management, you in college is so free that you have to be able to, like, manage what you want to do without getting distracted, I feel like. Yeah, and I feel like I've kind of learned, like, that I, it's okay to take breaks. Mm-hmm. You know, it's okay to chill. It's okay to lay and do nothing. Um, But for me, I, I was just telling someone this today. Over breaks and stuff, I hate sleeping in. Like, I can't sleep in. Really? Because new, yeah. Like, I mean, I'll do it on the like, first day back, maybe second day. But after that, I'm like, okay, you got to get your butt up. Like, you got to do something. Got to be productive in some way. Like, it's just going to drill into me. Like, you need to be productive, you know, do something. Mm-hmm. Um, But at the same time, always taking time for breaks and realizing that there isn't a problem with resting. Like, That's we true. all need rest. It's so powerful. Even and God even, rested. Even God rested. And you can't just go, go, go all the time. You need time to yourself, time to just rest and chill. Wow. That's good. So... From a non-athlete's perspective, we see athletes here at the University of Notre Dame. You know, we see you all going to the Goog. We you know we think you all have this high type, high type of luxury life. But from your perspective, how do you? What do you see, or what do you go through that at the non-athletes here at Notre Dame don't see or don't completely understand? Yeah, well, I would say like being a demon athlete is not all sunshine and rainbows. People see the good about it. They see the praise, they see the accolades, they see, oh, y'all go on charter flights and y'all stand in nice hotel rooms and get in nice dinners and all this stuff. And Mm -hmm. they think that we have it all. When in reality, it's really hard. Like, I mean, first off, it's really hard just to be a student athlete in general on your body, on your mind, on like you're just doing work, you know, and being constantly like exhausted, kind of. But it also takes a major toll on your mindset. It can a lot, especially freshmen. Like, freshman year transitioning transitioning to college people already know that's hard but transitioning yeah. to college as an athlete is also very difficult because there's so many there's so many things stacked on top of you mm-hmm. um and so for me my transition to to college was really, really hard like that was the darkest time of my life and thank god like god set me free and he walked me through it and i am so much better because of it mm-hmm. but i i walked in and you know you're used to being the top do- dog of your school like yeah. you're the girl and then you walk into a top institution and it feels like you're not the girl anymore. You know, it feels like you're not as good and like you're not playing. And it's like you're surrounded by everyone who would top dogs, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and so for me, that was very anxiety inducing. I was terrified because then I realized that it really came down to me not believing I belonged here and fearing that other people would find that out if I made a mistake on the court or if I if I failed in some capacity while I was playing or something like that, like it would show people on my team like. I don't belong here. Like it would be, it would, mm. it would just, it would support what I was already believing and the lie that the enemy told me. Um, and so during that time, it was dark. Like, I mean, dark. I didn't want to get up in the morning. Like I would lay in bed and be like, oh my gosh, like I really have to get up right now. Um, and it just was not fun. Like my heart would beat constantly, like all the time what? for like four months straight, my heart was just pounding and I couldn't get it to stop. And I was like, what is going on? My my, my thoughts are racing. Couldn't get my thoughts to stop. And I was like, I don't know what to do. Like, I would go to God and like, just kind of felt helpless. And Mm -hmm. I was in a, I was in a spot where I was like, this is my prayer, you know, like, this is my prayer. Like, this all is exactly like, this is everything I've ever wanted, you know, but I felt like I was in this box where I was in a glass box. I could see everything that I had ever wanted, but I couldn't feel any of it. I got to see it all, but I couldn't enjoy any of it. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I remember actually like going home. And I was sitting in the back of my car with my parents and they were driving and I was looking up scriptures on anxiety. And so I pulled up um, one scripture it's in Matthew, but Jesus is on this boat and um, on the waves, there's like a storm going on and wind, wind's going crazy, waves are going crazy. And the disciples look him up and are like, what are you doing? Like, we're going to drown. Do you not care? <laughs> and he gets up and he's like, peace be still. And that's what he says, peace be still. And then there was a great calm. 
And I didn't know the context of all that. All I really read was like one verse where Jesus said, peace be still. So I read that verse out loud. And I, when I said the words, peace be still, for the first time in months, my heart literally stopped pounding. Like, I mean, like, it's stopped, serious? like legit, like just stopped pounding. And I was like, what? And I said it again, same thing. And I was like, ain't no way. So at this point, I'm bawling in the backseat of my car, of my parents' car. And I just keep saying the words, peace be still. And it was like, every time, like my heart would just go like, do, 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 do. I'd say, peace be still. And it just go, Ch. And then it'd go back to like, do, do, do. And I'd say, peace be still. And I'd go, do, Ch. And I was like, what? So it just, it completely blew my mind. And I went home and I kept saying those words. Like when I came back to campus and I felt myself getting worked up, I'd say, peace be still. Same thing would happen. It would just like calm. And the context is crazy because mm. I didn't realize that for like a year later. But the fact that Jesus tells the winds and the waves to peace, like peace be still. And then there was a great calm. That's what happened to my heart every single time. And it's like God tells us, like, he'll give us peace beyond our own our own understanding, because I still don't get it. Other than the fact that God's word is powerful and it's true. And that's how we fight our battles is using God's word. Amen. But God completely set me free. I mean, like just trusting in him and using scripture was like huge. I remember praying over myself, too, and like rebuking anxiety out of my life. I was like, you're not going to control my life like fear. Like I literally talked to him. I was like, you're not going to control my life. I rebuke you in Jesus name. And you have no, like, there's no, there's no part of the story that belongs to you. There's no room in the story of my life that is yours and that you can fit into. And I rebuked it out of my life. And for the first time, I felt like, like me again, just as the name of Jesus. Like, I felt like, I felt like me again. Mm -hmm. And even when I came back to school, like the next semester, I just had this peace that I couldn't understand. It literally felt like God was guarding my heart and my mind because I didn't really understand it like that. I thought that I had to try to figure things out too. That's why I, I overthought a lot. Because oh. I was trying to make it make sense in my head. I was like, I'm going to fight this in my own thoughts. And I was like, nah, I just need, I needed to fight it back with God's own thoughts and let God fight it for me. And so um, it wasn't until like I really laid it down at God's feet. And I was like, okay, God, I'm just going to like trust you and like lay it down and like meditate on your word. That things started to change for me and like really, really change. So when I got back, like, I mean, it just literally felt like God's, God was guarding my heart and my mind. I had this peace I couldn't explain, um, even though I was in the same position and in the same place that was causing me like fear before. I felt so much better and so much at, like just filled with peace. And um, I would use scripture too to like literally combat the lies of the enemy. Whenever I felt like a thought was coming in my head, like I literally quote scripture, like, have I not commanded you be strong and courageous? Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. The Lord your God goes with you wherever you go. I would quote that stuff to myself and like those thoughts would lose all power. Like it literally, I'd be like, what was I thinking about? Like, I don't know. Like it would, it would literally shut the enemy up mm. and it blows my mind. But it's the fact that like our God's that powerful. That like my God's that powerful where like I can't there's things that I can't fight, but my God can fight and that he'll win it for me. And that I'm already victorious in it because he lives in the battles, you know. Yeah. yeah. So so that was definitely my hardship um, and definitely something that, you know, it made me stronger. It, it makes me who I am today. One hundred and ten percent. But it was hard. But it showed the it showed it gave me a testimony. You know, it showed me the power of Christ. Um, and, yeah, it taught me to love people, too, because like like you said, like. People see us on campus. They see the athletes on campus. Thinks it's all like all great and sunshine. It's not always like that. It's hard. Uh, people don't know for real. People don't know. So yeah. when you were going through this time freshman year, did you ever like express this to your teammate or coaches or friends, or you kind of went on this journey on your own? I really went on it on my own. Um, mm. on campus, like on oh, campus. I didn't yeah. tell my teammates and stuff. I did tell my parents. I talked to my parents all the time, like every day. There was times like <laughs> I would just put them on the phone while I was doing homework because it's like they did. were they didn't even say anything. Like, I just hear them, like, in the kitchen, hear my brothers talking and like, all that stuff. Like, they weren't even talking to me. It just gave me comfort to, like, know that they were there uh, and, like, they reminded me at home. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so I would say definitely my parents. I talked to a lot. Um, a family friend from back home who's, like, my parents' age, like, one of, like, one of our family friends. I talked to her. Mm -hmm. um, but, like, that was really mainly a I didn't really reach out to anyone else on campus. Uh, okay. Did you, did you ever feel, like, comfortable talking to people on campus or did you – kind of wanted to keep it hidden or just kind of keep that smile on your face throughout the whole process? Yeah, I would say, like, I just didn't, I didn't want other people to know. Yeah. Like, I, I just didn't want other people to know I was that's struggling true. that bad. Like, I think, I think that's what it came down to. And, um, yeah. yeah, and also I didn't realize other people on my team were struggling too. <laughs> really? I had no idea. I had no idea. Because you come in as a freshman and you think, like, oh, everyone's enjoying life. You know, you look at everyone exactly. and you, you think, think that. Like, you think I that, but you really have no idea. And so, I like I thought it was just me. I was like, dang, I'm just I'm just having a bad transition. This is just me. Turns out like at the end of my freshman year, some of my like other upperclassmen on my team were talking and they were like, freshman year was the worst time of my life. Like it was so hard. <laughs> like, 
what? Like, are you serious right now? Because I thought it was just me. And they were like, no, no, no. Like, I mean, like, freshman year is awful. Like, it was so wow. hard. Um, And so even now, like, I talk to friends and they're, like, on other teams. And they're like, freshman year was so difficult. Like, it was so hard. And I thought it was just me. Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I thought it was just me. So it's it's literally, it's. So yeah. shows that everyone actually just goes through something. Yes. It's really just no yes. one wants to talk about it. Yeah. And that's why now in athletics, we're actually starting something. Um, And I've been, like, a major contributor to starting this um, and planning it is something called um, Champions Guiding Champions, which mm-hmm. is something, her name's Sophia Fisher. She's on women's so- soccer. We've been doing this together. And we're starting a mentorship program within athletics. Basically, like, the upper class are going to be the mentors. The under class are going to be the mentees. Mm. And they're going to be able to support each other. So the freshmen is- incoming have someone there who can, on another team, who can give them advice and yeah. support them and just tell, like, pretty much let them know they're not alone. I like that. And, yeah, like it, just, that. it opens up the horizons and allows people to, you know, get advice and realize that, like, it's you okay. Know, you don't say the struggle. Yeah. yeah it's okay. And, like, people go through it and it's fine. Wow. So now that you're a senior now and you've kind of gone through everything and the freshmen of volleyball team, do you kind of give them advice or talk to them or you all as the seniors come together and tell them, like, you know, it's okay to struggle because we struggle too? Yeah, I really, really try to. I try to keep up and, like, check on my the freshmen on my team mm. um, a lot just to be like, yo, like, how are you? You know, and if they yeah. say they're good, I'm like, tell me why. Yeah, and if they I, yeah, I'm like, okay. like, you know, you can't force people to open up and stuff. And I really pray that they really are doing good, the ones who say that they're doing good. Um, but there have been times where I've been able to, you know, speak life into my teammates and be there and, like, support them and tell them, like, yo, I know that this is hard. This is what I've gone through. This is what this is what other people I know have gone through. Like you're not the only ones. You it will get better, you know. Um, and even being just vulnerable as well. Vulnerability is huge. Like to me, yes. I'm an open book because I think we can all learn from each other, and it's huge. And you just don't th- you don't just go through things in life for nothing. Like mm-hmm. you go through it as well to be able to help other people through their challenges as well. And so when we have team meetings and stuff, like I've been open about it, like about my struggles and. Just, I mean, trying to create that that culture and that that feeling and validation that I needed my freshman year and create that on my team. So my whole goal this year with this past season was love and like making sure we cultivate an atmosphere of love and belonging and making sure everyone knows, like, I don't care what your role on this team is, if you're playing or not, you belong here. We want you here. We appreciate you and you are contributing um, no matter what. And that it's love at the end of the day. That's what we're rooted in. So. It's just been great. It's been special. That's good. That's good. So, you know, senior year, you played a lot of games throughout your volleyball career here at Notre Dame. Is there a specific game that sticks out that you just kind of played bad in and, you know, explain? If so, how do you explain how you got through that mentally? Yeah, I would say Duke this year, I did not play very well at all. And I was mm. very frustrated um because i was like what what is happening like i mean i kept eating balls basically like you're going up to the block but like mm-hmm. the ball you're, the ball is like going through like your arms and so mm-hmm. it's ending up hitting the like floor on your side um and so i would just brush it i was like what is going on like the whole game just kind of got in my head too and after the game i was just like man like i was just disappointed and i was like dang like i really did not play good and I went back to the hotel and I decided, I was like, okay, I'm not about to overthink this. Because mm-hmm. that's what freshman would have done. With probably like freshman <laughs> first semester. Yeah, overthinking. I was like, I'm not going to overthink this. Like, I know how to play the game. Um, It's not that deep. At the end of the day, like, it's really not that deep. Um, And so I ended up typing on a Google Doc and just wrote out my prayer to God. I was like, okay, God, this is what I'm feeling. But this is what I know about you. And this is what I know that you say that you, this is what you say, you know? And so. I was like, I'm gonna gonna trust you, and so I'm gonna just not overthink it and just let it be and see how tomorrow goes. So go to practice the next day, and I remember telling the Lord while we're practicing, I'm like, okay, audience one, I'm literally just gonna play for you, and since I'm just playing for you, I am going to literally go out with the most attitude and like confidence <laughs> ever because I know who you say I am, and mm-hmm. if I'm just playing for you, it doesn't matter what the last game was, I can walk out with the same level of confidence because you're the one who's supplying me with that confidence, and so. I literally went out the next game. This is why it's so special, too, is that, like, UNC, the next game, I played, like, probably the best game of the season. Like, I played so well. Um, But it wasn't even yeah, just my play. It was also my demeanor on the court and my confidence mm-hmm. and, like, just playing playing three, you know, and just being like, okay, like, last game, I really did not play well, but that's fine. Like, I'm not about to, I'm not about to sit back and be like, dang, like, what if this happens? What if I don't play well again? No, I'm going to attack it and say I am going to play good. And I'm not, I'm I'm going to play great and I'm going to do this. And I didn't allow the enemy to have any say, you know? And so I really just decided to trust in God, take the confidence and 
run with it. I like that mentality too. That you just know, like you got to go into the game knowing that you're gonna you're gonna be hurt. Simple as that. Yeah. I like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. So one more final question before we wrap things up, Miss Charity. What advice would you give to the people out there on their mental health journey? I would say go to God. In all honesty, like that, that's the best answer I can give you. Because for me, when I was struggling with mental health, like, I mean, it was it was God who got me through. Like that was I mean, I could talk to people all I wanted. And yes, talking to people like helped a lot. Like me talking to my parents and I did go to sports psych for a little bit when I the second semester of my freshman year, like that stuff, it, it helped, but it didn't set me free. Mm -hmm. And so what set me free was Christ. What set me free was God and reading mm -hmm. the Bible, oh. and, like letting him move. So I would say for people struggling with their mental health journey, um, go to God, give him a shot, you know, because he says, seek me and you'll find me. Knock and the door will be open. So seek, knock and see what happens. Um, because for me, he completely set me free. Like it wasn't just something that was like, and also I told myself consistently, like, Charity, you are not an anxious person. You are in an anxious season. Do not let anxiety claim you. I like that. Don't let anxiety claim you. Um, and another thing like that, like the Lord will just teach you things too. Like he's taught me so much. One thing he taught me um, that really allowed me to play completely free going into my junior year was confidence isn't believing you won't make mistakes. Confidence is knowing you'll be okay when you do. And that changed the whole game for me as well. Like it was exactly what I needed. I was praying to the Lord, like, show me, you know, what, give me a phrase that I can say to myself to play completely free. Mm -hmm. And it was one morning I literally had just woken up and this thought pops in my head. That's what popped in my head. And it was just like, it was special. And now that I'm thinking about it as well, I know we're wrapping up. No, no, you good. You good. You good. <laughs> um, I don't hear this. I'm thinking back to also like during winter break after my freshman um, my first freshman season here when I was really, really struggling and still trying on rocky ground, trying God, God had shown up with the PC still thing. After that, I was still like stressed, you know, still overthinking. And I was, I was telling the Lord, I was like, okay, I don't, they just show me something, you know? And so yeah. one night I was brushing my teeth to go to bed and I'm on YouTube and I just scrolled to like the 40 page, the first video on there, or the one I found was, um, it said, watch this before you go to bed. That's all mm -hmm. it said. And it's Joyce Meyer, who is like, she's a minister, um, but she teaches a lot and her, she's just really, really good. Check her out. Mm -hmm. um, but it just says, watch this before you go to sleep. I'm like, okay, I'm about to go to sleep. So I'll watch it, whatever. So I click it. She talks like uh, about every single thing I'm sh like struggling with and was stressing out that day. She touched it all. And at that point, I listened to the whole like hour video and I'm bawling because it spoke to everything. And I was like, you're telling me that I just clicked this one video randomly just told you everything that told me to watch this before you go to bed. And it didn't say what it was about or anything. And it spoke to everything I needed. And I was just like, it blew me away. But it just shows like how much God is there for us. Um, So that's my, that's what I would have to say, like for advice mm -hmm. is give Christ a chance, you know, and, and well, don't give up on your faith at all. Don't give up on him because he won't give up on you. Amen. Lay down for him. Lay down for him. Well, people, you heard it from Miss Charity right here. Thank you again, Charity for coming in on this episode. And thank you, Regis recipients, for tuning in as well. Any last words, Charity, to the people? God, thanks for listening. And thanks, JD. This is great. Appreciate it. No problem, man. No problem. Always and forever. Regis recipients, is, remember, it's okay to not be okay. You matter. It's your boy, JD, and I'm out. Mm -hmm.